www.wisconsinvegetable.com. Now back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show, which is presented to you by Power Planter Earth Augers, the official digging tool to find the right size for your digging project. Visit powerplanter.com. Now here are your hosts, Joey and Holly Baird. Welcome welcome back to the Wisconsin Vegetable Gardener Radio Show. Holly, let's go to the hotline and bring in our guest for this week. Pamela Crawford is an award-winning nationally known landscape designer and author of 10 best-selling gardening books. She has successfully designed over 1,500 landscapes in the last 25 years. Her beautiful designs are routinely covered by newspapers, national magazines, and television. Welcome to the program, Pamela. Well, thank you very much. Well, we appreciate you taking time out of your day. Now, you're very passionate about container gardening. First of all, why is that? And why are container gardening so, container gardening so important? I know a lot of people who want to garden have the mindset of, well, if I can't grow it in the ground, I can't garden. There are, there are a lot of reasons. I mean, first of all, what attracted me to container gardens were the absolutely gorgeous containers coming in from Asia, particularly Vietnam. Um, as somebody who designed the landscapes, we need accents that are gorgeous, and they provide that. And then from a growing standpoint, vegetables, for example, are a lot easier to grow in containers. I remember one year that was particularly rainy here, and all my neighbor's vegetables were dying from fungus. And mine and my containers did absolutely extremely well another reason the bugs don't seem to like to walk up the side of them i didn't get anywhere near as many pests as the people around me who had them planted in the ground the other thing is instant results you can go to a garden center buy some flowers bring them home put them in a beautiful pot and you've got instant garden container gardens are not planted normally to to go forever you plant them to go for a short time, so you plant the plants right next to each other, and voila. And, and with a landscape designer like you are, you're you're looking at the color of the, the container, the color of the flower or the vegetable, and trying to accent them two together. Exactly. Okay, so sometimes people want larger containers but aren't sure how to incorporate them. They feel intimidated. What are some tips for incorporating larger containers into a landscape or even as an accent piece? Okay, first of all, larger pots are easier than smaller pots because they hold more water and they hold more soil. The plants get bigger and are happier. And I think people who just got the hang of, of using them would be very, very happy with them. Um, one of the places I love is on either side of a front door. Another area at garden entries, one on each side. Focal points and planting beds, particularly at the apex of curves. To accent a blank wall, I don't know how many times I've done that, is just put a group of three large pots in front of a wall and it completely changes it. And then on either side of a bench. Now there I would go with shorter pots, but I like the larger the better. Well, what are, what are some, uh, what are some soil tips for container gardening? Should one dump all the soil out and start over each year? Or should they fertilize it? And in, in addition to that, some people are intimidated by large containers because they don't want to do the initial expense of filling that large container up and they try to use items to you fill airspace. What, what do you suggest on that as well? Uh, if you're using a, say you're using a pot that's four feet tall and maybe a foot and a half wide and you're planting annual flowers in it, those roots aren't going to go down to the bottom of that pot. In that situation, I put gravel on the very bottom and then a couple of inches of gravel. And then I would put mulch probably for two feet. And then I would put potting mix from there to the top. When I'm changing out plantings, I replace the potting mix as far down as the roots go from last year's planting so that the plants will have room um, in the potting soil to send their roots. Well, it makes a lot of sense. And then with that mulch, if I, if my science is right, that will absorb the water and then release it up into the soil as it's needed, correct? No, I'm talking about putting the mulch on the bottom. Oh, that's yep. just using, yeah, that's just using it as a filler because it's less expensive than potting mix. Right, right, okay. And then that makes sense to only fill, replace the soil where the roots are 
because why replace the whole thing if the roots aren't utilizing that soil at the very bottom? Right. But with vegetables and things like that, it's interesting. In the large pots, I can take just one tomato plant, put it in a, gosh, I'm thinking of one that's 28 inches wide, and the roots of that tomato plant will fill up that huge pot, and they just love it. They get, you get tons of tomatoes, and the tomatoes grow huge. Now, with your expertise, would you say one of the biggest uh, mistakes beginner container gardening people make is underestimating the size of the container or yes. the location of the, where it's going to be? I think it's, well, both. But it, people who are just getting started always buy these puny little tiny pots. That's great if you want to put a couple of succulents in them. But if you're planting annuals or any of the perennials or um, particularly vegetables and herbs, they really spread out. I mean, I've had sweet basil reach three feet high when I put it in a very large pot. And they're they're happier that way. And you don't need to plant five basil plants. You'll get all you need and all your neighbors need on just one. Well, when it comes to the material of a container, do you is there a specific uh, material that you gravitate towards versus another one? Uh, not really. I, I use predominantly the Asian glazed containers, with my favorite country being Vietnam in terms of what they're exporting. But China is doing some great work on that, too. And they have turned glazing pots into an art form. You can find those at your better garden centers. But I'm also using synth- synthetics. Um, I'm thinking there's a company called Lechuza, a German company, who makes self-watering c- containers that are just fabulous. They're actually made out of plastic. I would never have guessed it when I used them because they're very attractive. So it's more the appearance of the container i haven't found a whole lot of differences in terms of materials and i think i've tested everything that i've ever found a container made of well that's um that's interesting so um we are talking with pamela crawford she is an author and a nationally known landscape designer now what is a living wall maybe some people have heard of this not really quite sure what it is they might just be thinking of like ivy growing up the side of a building um how can people plan for that now to grow next spring or whenever their ideal growing season is? Okay. Um, living wall planters are still relatively new. And they got started with the whole biophilia movement of adding green to cities. And, and they were developing these really creative planters that hung on a wall. And they planted plants all along the wall. And the idea was to give people a relief from hardscape in the city and also to give them more oxygen. So the problem came in is that the type of plants that do well there are epiphytes. And epiphytes are plants that normally grow up something, like are growing up a tree. And it's taken a lot of years of of trial and error. And I don't I still don't think we're there. The ones I see in public places and the ones I've been able to look at close up for a long time have a lot of plant replacements going on and probably it's just trial and error that they're, they're figuring out, um, what to put in it. I developed a, a small one. Um, I guess it's just called Pamela Crawford living wall for consumers to use for short term. Let's say you want something for a summer. These are just squares and you can put as many squares together as you want to make them larger and larger. And those work with annuals or they'll work with herbs and that's just that's just made to have a decoration on a wall. Not not a permanent long term, but more of a seasonal. No, because the roots are constricted. And once again, it's it's the epiphytes that are going to make it long term, which are the ones that are used to sending their roots out and around whatever it is they're attached to, right. like sending it around a tree or around a wall. And I haven't done a whole lot of testing on those. Okay, um, so you have a book coming out in January. It's called Easy Patio Veggies and Herbs. And, um, I mean, obviously it's about patio veggies and herbs, but maybe more you can tell us more about what it entails and then also maybe something specific in that book that would be interesting to our listeners. Okay. Um, this is a continuation of some other vegetable books that I've written. I wrote one on vegetables and flowers in containers. I wrote another one on herbs. 
And this one, I'm combining uh, veggies and herbs. And the feature on this book is to make gorgeous container garden arrangements with huge amounts of vegetables. Um, and that's been very, very exciting for me. I did a lot of trial and error with vertical pots, you know, pots that might be three feet tall and 15 inches wide, because if you're working with a small space, you can fit more of them on there. And I wanted to find out, would the tomato roots, which people had thought grew horizontally, what happened if you put them in a big, tall thing? And what happened was those roots went down to the bottom. And you take something like yellow pear tomatoes, which is one of the heirlooms, I was getting hundreds and hundreds of tomatoes off of that. So I was working on making things look good and getting huge amounts of produce. So that's been very exciting. And, I, and I've, I've worked with a lot of plants, I think, for this book. Gosh, I planted, I don't know, 1,500, 2,000, something like that, plants, because I had to try them every different way to see if it would work. And the other thing that, that's important is when – You've suddenly really pushed up the production of the vegetables. How many plants do you really need? I'll take habanero peppers as an example. I planted three habanero, four habanero pepper planters into one pot. And I ended up with close to 300 habanero peppers. (laughs) (laughs) I didn't want 300 habanero peppers. I wanted maybe three or four. So um, I um, we had Mexican restaurants all around us that we supplied with habanero peppers that summer. It's important to know before you get started, how many vegetables are you going to get if you put them in a big pot? So I studied that. And the book is designed so you can take it with you to the garden center and look up a particular vegetable and find out how many how many you're going to get before you buy four of them when maybe you only need one. And, of course, the other emphasis is to make make the vegetables look really good. Instead of using tomato cages, which I hate, I used either beautiful trellises to support the vegetables or something called obelisks. You can Google that, and they have a lot of different ones for sale, which are which are tall, decorative, metal supports. And I would put them in the pot. Sometimes I'd spray them. And it was just fun. I mean, it's nice to know that. If your patio, like most people's, all your whole house overlooks it, you don't want it to be ugly. And it's really nice to know that you can grow large quantities of food right there conveniently and have them attractive. Absolutely. And that's the other thing. No matter what you're growing, you kind of want to know what the potential expectation is on that crop or the size of the flower that you're growing so you can know what kind of container or where to Mm -hmm. properly place it so you're not brushing into it every time you walk in the house. Right. And I have container sizes, of course, for for every vegetable. It's got, I mean, yes, it's got a lot of beautiful pictures in it because I'm proud of all the beautiful results that I had. But at the same time, it's a very practical book. If you go to the tomato page, I've got, I think I tried, I don't know, maybe 20 different varieties of tomatoes. Well, for each one, I'm going to tell you things like how big of a pot you need, which is also critical. Most people have a tendency to buy pots that are too small, and you need to know before you mess something up. Absolutely. Well, Pamela, we greatly appreciate the information and the time you've given us. How can people find more about you and find your books? Um, They can find my website. It's Pamela Crawford and associates and that's up and running right now i still have a lot of work to do on it to change it over from florida because i'm not in florida anymore um and then they can also go to youtube i have a youtube channel and i have an awful lot of videos on container gardens well we thank you for the time you've given us pamela not only educating holly and myself but all of our listeners across the country and we thank you for that okay thank you and For more information, please visit thewisconsinvegetablegardener.com.